Hi guys, it's Alyssa Mercante from Kotaku, and I'm here with Alexia Pajanov and Hank Rogers, who you guys probably know if you know video games. The opening monologue describes like Tetris as like addictive and something that you can't stop thinking about even when you're not playing it. Is that kind of how you think a good video game is? It's like a song, you know, you 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 hear when you hear a song that you like, you hear it in, in your mind, oh, you know, what's wrong with that? So when you had to deal with this right securing this whole big thing in order to get Tetris outside of uh, what was at the time the Soviet Union, how realistic was that portrayed in the movie? Because there's obviously like chases, fun stuff and exciting things. Oh, it, it, it was, I was definitely breaking the law, <laughs> you know, and when I went through that door, uh, so I didn't come all this way to stand in front of the door and go back and get a visa. I actually went through that door and that was actually a like, what the hell's gonna happen to me now? And then being in the lobby, just waiting for somebody to talk to me and the guy staring at me waiting for, to give my credentials. I, of course, I didn't have any credentials, so I just stood there and, and yeah, it was an adventure. Yeah. Crazy adventure. Yeah, and at the same time, when he just supposed that something wrong could happen with him. I knew for sure. Yeah, you were like, something back. <laughs> he, he knew the, that he was breaking the law. I, I kind of felt, you know, I, did, I didn't know what the laws were, but he knew what the laws and were. And you didn't tell him. <laughs> like, it was a perestroika time, glassless time. We really, we really have some very good hope at that time. I mean, you're here. Tetris is Tetris. There you go. It was there worth it. It was definitely worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I mean, and now there's so many different iterations. There's Tetris 99 and people play Tetris competitively. And I wonder yeah. if you like see all those different versions of it. Yeah, we, we, we keep track of all of them. That's our job. <laughs> so what's your favorite version? I like 99. I mean, mm. I like the original. Oh, one. Nice. I like the original yeah. as well, but yeah. I just didn't have as much like ease yeah. of access yeah, to it. You know, I didn't have Nintendo systems in my house until I was older. Mm. My parents didn't want me yeah. to play video games. I, re I really enjoy 99. You do? Oh, yes. That's, that's probably now one of the... We have some people on our team who are very into Tetris 99. Oh, so they'll be happy to know that you like it. <laughs> it's not just them fighting for it all the time. <laughs> and obviously you also famously made the Black Onyx. Oh. Yeah, which is something that several people on our team brought up immediately when they heard you were going to be here. Oh, okay. So I'm just curious, like that sort of, it shook up like the computer game market at the time. In Japan. Yes, in Japan. In Japan, to be clear. So, uh, you know, I majored in computer science and I minored in Dungeons and Dragons when I was in uh, <laughs> at the University of Hawaii. We had a club called ARG, uh, Alternative Rec Recreational Realities Group of Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, six years later, I was living in Japan and um, personal computers came out. I thought, oh, I can make a game. I went to Akihabara, looked at what the games are and, and conspicuously missing were role-playing games. And, you know, I knew nothing about how tiny this computer actually was. It's an 8-bit computer with 64K of memory. And I, I made a role-playing game for this machine. And uh, it had graphics, it had story, it had the 3D that you could walk through, 30 monsters, et cetera, et cetera. And I, today, it, it seems like that was another crazy thing that I did. You know, I was planning to make this kind of a game and I could actually only fit this much. <laughs> And then knowing what to throw out is, is really the hard part if, you, if you're squeezing into 64K. But it was the number one game in 1984 and got me a publishing company. Oh, so there you, go. there you go. And having a publishing company eventually led me to travel around the world looking for games. And the Consumer Electronics Show, I found Tetris. It all comes together. There you go. Coming from my background of like knowing about video games and, and acquisitions and rights and, and all this stuff, this is such a fantastic and fascinating story for kind of seeing it in modern times in gaming because there's so many big business things that happen that are just, I, I know that there's intrigue going on. We don't know what's going on in the background, but there's stuff like, you know, the, the massive Microsoft acquisition of Activision that's 60 something billion dollars. I wonder how you look at something like that and go, man, back in the day, I was breaking the law, going to other countries just to get this game like in people's hands. It's a progression, you know, and, and uh, my understanding is that the game business has surpassed the movie business. So I'm going like, oh yeah, we're just <laughs> kicking butt, you know, as a, as a genre or as a entertainment form. Yeah. Uh, and it's not gonna go back, you know, because interactive stuff has gotta be better than sitting there couch potato stuff. 
at the end of the day. You get to do something. That it. was my, my main drive into the, into the game industry. Do you think people, because I feel like this is a movie, my parents are not gamers, but this is a movie that my parents would definitely love. Like I can tell, I've seen a lot of movies with them. Do you think this is something that people will turn around and go, man, I want to try Tetris again? <laughs> Barnum uh, said, there's a sucker born every day. <laughs> there's a Tetris player, you know, potential Tetris player born every day. My son played Tetris when he was three years old, for Christ's sakes. Wow. You know, so I think it's a very good thing for the mind to be able to do that kind of stuff uh, when you're young. So parents, please don't tell your kids don't play games. It's <laughs> you know, setting them up for a future that, you know, if you go back you know, in the 1800s, you were preparing for a lifetime of physical labor. Yeah. And so you did sports. <laughs> and now we are preparing our children for a, a lifetime of mental labor. And so they need to play video games. I have, I have some doubts about the, this increasing uh, of the game popularity after movie. But when I saw the reaction of audience, I, all my doubts are gone because people really love it. It was such a noisy crowd at South by Southwest. Oh yeah, they get rowdy. And it too. was really, it was amazing. It felt like I just won an Oscar or something. That's so lovely. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Well, I'm glad to hear that you guys are enjoying all of this. And I can't wait for other people to see it, including my parents, because then maybe they'll finally understand what I do for them. Is that what you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I all really right. appreciate it. You're welcome.